Welcome to Business Coaching Secrets with Carl Bryan. If you want to attract new high-end coaching clients, fill live events, and build a wildly profitable coaching practice where business owners pay, stay, and refer, you've come to the right place. In this podcast, Carl provides his keys to the kingdom for finding and signing high-paying clients and building the coaching business of your dreams. Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, coaches around the world, welcome to another episode of Business Coaching Secrets. It's your boy, The Road Dog, with none other than the man, the myth, the four-foot legend, Carl Brine, is in the house, folks. Yo, Road Dog, it's been been weeks since you teased my height, shoots, well done. I know, I know, I know. You know what the, the good news is, um, now that you're you know living in paradise, when a hurricane rolls through, like you're so close to the ground, it's just <laughs> safety first, bud. It's beautiful. <laughs> I was safe. I was safe. There you go. Shoot. We're safe. Yeah. It's 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 a it's a wonderful thing. It's a wonderful thing. Like everybody's just like looking for, you know, like big palm trees. You're looking for garden gnomes to hang on to. It's a beautiful thing, but there you go. <laughs> hey, um speaking of garden gnomes, I don't know how I'm gonna pivot from that, but um your your little bike adventures that you're riding, um with your your YouTube videos, give us an update, man. Like, how, how are they going, and what are you uh, what are you what are you learning from all that? My bike adventures. Well, you know what? Literally, a it's probably an hour ago now. As I sit here, I have got a bloodied foot, a bloodied shin, which a video coming at you soon. I got pulverized by a wave, and I showed everybody my bike, and you're gonna see it's got some pretty messy shoots. As if you know, there's seaweed crap all over it but whatever anyways going good going good shoots when i'm not getting mowed over not paying it so that's what happens when you're not paying attention and my phone has still only taken two swims so that's good news um they were early on but uh so what are you asking so the podcast what am i learning you know people look the long videos there's just no doubt the feedback and i am yeah you know, if you can engage people and whatnot you know like tim ferris will keep you for three hours um, who's the, who am I trying to think of? Road Rogan. Dog, the guy from uh, the MMA, Joe Rogan, Rogan right? Yeah. Keeps people for two, three hours. I am not Joe Rogan yet. That's for sure because nobody wants to listen to me prattle on um, longer than a few minutes is something that I'm working out. But as I get better, you know, again, I'm sure it's going to be, uh, you know, I'll start going to some longer videos and it depends upon where I'm at, right? And again, I'm not uh, staking my future on this, but having some fun um but the short videos are definitely getting better feedback than the long ones um it's harder than i thought pay that i'm gonna just do a hundred my commitment is i'm gonna do a hundred of them and then uh, i'll know where i'm at i can tell you early on i, I said i would learn a lot like I, I create a little bit of a framework for it which by the way road dog you were instrumental in helping me make that happen um, but I create a little bit of a framework to make it easier. Like when we do um, business coaching mastery, which by the way, coming up in Cancun shortly, um, it's sold out. So you can't get in there if you wanted to. But that being said, um, last year, like, so I start like I'd, I'd open it up with four hours and my four hour talk, I probably had 20 slides with like one word on them. Right. And I got asked a lot. Um, you know, over a couple of beers, like how, how did you talk for four hours? And like, you just got one word on the slide. And if you know, you know, sometimes you're doing presentations like that, um, you know, they, you know, people have like a PowerPoint slide that's got, you know, 50 words per slide and that, and that's fine. And that helps people guide them. Um, but what I, so I have a framework that I use, like I've got a word that pops up, but then I have like a framework that I follow. Um, and that allows me to understand, you know, about that word or the phrase or whatever I have on the the screen where I'm trying to go with it. So anyway, so a framework, um, what am I saying? So if you're going to do something like that, you're going to do an audio, you're going to do a video, you're going to do some, um, you know, you want to be, because it's not just about putting, you know, messaging out and like cognitive X, Y, Z. You want something that's going to be, you know, implementable and something that they can go and kind of run with. So, so a framework, 
um, I created one, and I think you should be thinking about that as you you know you do presentations and you talk. Look, if you're going to talk to a business owner um, and you want to move them, maybe you want to move them to a sale, you want to move them to action, you want to move them to do um, something that you feel is advantageous to them. Again, a, a framework prior would be a good idea. Um, so yeah, there's there's that that framework. It's just having zero expectations. Like I said, I'm just going to put out 100 videos and then you know see what happens. And again, I, the magic is that I'm gonna like my expectation is that I'm gonna learn a lot. It's like when I do my daily email. It's basically my journal. And I've said this many a times, right, Road Dog? But like I've learned more than the entire audience collectively um, doing the you know doing my daily email. Right, so I, I continue to do it because I continue to learn. If there's something that I'm trying to learn, something that I'm, um, you know, riffing on, um, you know, I'll, I'll write about it. Right, like I want to learn something. I really, like, what do they say? Like, the best way to learn something is to teach it to somebody else. Um, it's really powerful for me. So again, the videos. Um, I'm not sitting here trying to work out how I'm going to monetize them and advertise them and this, that, and the other. Because frankly, I I don't. I'm just riding my I'm I ride my bike down the beach anyways, right? Like I just like literally did an hour ago. Right, got smoked today, which normally doesn't happen, but it did today. Um, and you'll get to see it on a video um, or the aftermath at least. Um, but you know what I mean? Like I I'm not. You know what I mean? I'm not. I got to work it out, you know, and I haven't worked it out. I'm not pretending to have it worked out. That being said, um, I think that I dropped some, you know what I mean? Like I'm talking about different topics that I know that, you know, through this podcast and through the emails that I get and through the, you know, coaches that we serve, we're in 49 countries. I've got no shortage of clients that, you know, asking questions. Um, so I kind of have a bit of a feel, I think, Road Dog, for what people are looking for. So I'm just riffing on these. I'm trying to use seven minutes as my, my guide sometimes like today I went like nine um, and you know, I've gone five and then sometimes I hit it on seven, but kind of seven minutes is kind of where I'm at. Um, throw a topic out there. I answer it. Is the, are the last two minutes just you brushing your hair or what does that look like? <laughs> Shoot. You, 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 wait till you see today's you're going to be, I, I can't wait. Dude. I cannot wait until it's tarps off and like you're just riding shirtless on your bike with a <laughs> Blowing in the wind it was that huge. I, I, I thought of it honestly and then like i'm like oh my god if i would have done that i would have been like the biggest tool but oh. you know what a core audience of two aka me and huncy would appreciate <laughs> that too like to no end bud dudes i've been hitting the gym hard doing a lot of boxing man i'm telling you maybe might work out all right for me might be uh <laughs> <in her body. laughs> let's move on. Like, i'm not going there let's go shoots as they say, better late than never. Hey, just real quick on that, and I'm gonna riff here for a little bit, but before I even get to the other question, because I got sort of, you know, like I, I see you're getting a little bit more punchy, which is so fantastic, rather than you just going down a rabbit hole after rabbit hole. And I'm gonna throw a riff topic here in a second, because I'm kind of curious for you when it comes to off JV, but real quick, side question for you. When you're creating these these videos, and, and, and again, this is I'm pulling this from things that I'm learning. If you can believe it, it's amazing where you can get your life lessons from, right? So, I, yeah. as, as I mentioned last time, I'm coaching my my daughter's U13 soccer team, and it's really fascinating to me of where's the line, you know, in terms of um, when you're coaching them, of the amount of information that you're communicating versus what they can absorb. And, and then how do you actually get them to take action? So, because when you're doing these videos, you're not just doing it, well, maybe to hear your own voice at times, but you know what I mean, right? Like you're doing it because you want people to take an actionable step and, and, and to take that action. Have you figured that out? Like, have you figured out how, like, where is that line of which like it's now overkill in terms of the information that you're feeding and how can you almost convince somebody to take that action? Oh, good question. You know what? Ironic that you're asking me this right now because I just literally so. Um, okay, Road Dog, would you agree that most people have too much to do? Um, so we'd be benefiting them by kind of taking something off their to do list, if you know what I mean? Like, like we both know they've got 10 things on their to do list, much more probably, but they got 10 things on their to do list and they're not get like you're not getting through your to do list today. I'm not getting through my to-do list today and they're not getting through their to-do list today. 
So adding something different is probably not, you know what I mean? We're not serving them. So ironically, I've been thinking about this and literally today as I was riding back from doing my video and it's like, um, and I think I I said this in in the video, but it's like a real mentor can tell you what not to do, right? So I found that with these punchy little videos, I'm, I'm trying, like I'm playing in my mind with doing subtraction versus addition, if that makes sense. That's not really relevant for the kids with soccer, right? But you know what I mean? It's like a frame. That's what I'm like, you know what? If I could stop them, like example, uh, you know, building a big business versus growing a profitable business. We've talked about that to death on different podcasts and different audios that I've done, right? But like, you gotta be really careful to build a business and then hate yourself for building it because of the demands that it created, right? Um, and, and then I would say with the kids, like as an example, like I can tell you a hockey player, right? So I, the best hockey players, I, I'm gonna start coaching some, um, you know, there's some hockey here. I'm gonna coach some kids in hockey here, right? And with 100% certainty, I'm gonna say at the very beginning of starting to, you know, they're gonna listen, right? I'm gonna talk to them, I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna say, everybody loves to shoot the puck and I know how much fun that is but the best hockey players are the best skaters and then the most effective hockey players. And the one that I frankly would pick for my hockey team um, would be the best skater with the puck. Um, And I can tell you, I know nothing about soccer, but I can tell you that person like the quickest guys tend to be the better soccer players. That would be a one Oh one. But the best, the best soccer players will be the ones that carry the ball the best. And it's not to say that they're carrying the ball for a large percentage of the game, because again, they, they, they carry the ball for a very small percentage, but that's the player that will end up being, you know, generally speaking, will be the best player. So what am I getting at? We need to make sure that they're working on the right things, right? Like, in fact, I created a video that literally went out like, maybe today as we record time don't want to timestamp this but like i was <clears throat> the, the thing was why facebook ads don't work right and i was like the the reason facebook ads don't work is because a facebook ad isn't a facebook ad right a facebook ad is about creating an ad creating a head interrupting engaging educating offering building a landing page, knowing what the structure of that landing page should be. Um, and then it's um, setting of appointments and then it's sales um, and then it's building a sales team and then it's understanding lifetime value and then it's understanding um, you know time to value and then it's asking for referrals because again, if you've got two like you're running ads because you're trying to grow your business, but you're not asking for referrals and if every client sends you if every client you have sent you two referrals, you triple the size of your business like that. And you probably wouldn't be able to keep up if you tripled your current business, right? Or would be, yeah. So, um, so Road Dog, yeah, it's um, kind of playing subtraction is something that, like, I'm thinking about it again. A real mentor can tell you what not to do. Um, and I think it's just making sure that you're working on the right thing. So those kids that you're training, we got to make sure, sure. We all know they're going to go home and try hit the cross, you know, hit the crossbar and like bar down is something we say in hockey, right? Like, so in soccer, trying to kick the soccer ball. So it goes off the post and in and off the top crossbar and down. I'd have to assume that's cool for a soccer player. The under 11 girls aren't doing that, by the way, we know that, but they'll go home and practice kicking the ball. But are they going to go home and practice running with the ball? And that's the skill that I think will get them the furthest and allow them to become a triple A or a dominant soccer soccer player. So I don't know. What, what do you think of that? Yeah, it's it's interesting. It, well, the, one of the biggest things that I've noticed, and, and this is coaching 101 in terms of across the board, and, and even um, you talk of Facebook ads, you talk of whatever, right? I think the biggest mistake any coach, any uh, consultant, any whatever makes is is, is making assumptions and, and assuming that that the person that you're coaching is where you think they are, not where they actually yeah. are. Nice. Because one of the biggest things that I'm seeing is the foundational frame, like the foundation of where some of these girls are at. It's no different than going into, oh, I'm going to do this framework on every single business. Yeah, unless you do an assessment first. Finding out exactly where they are, you're not building based on fact, 
You're now just building based on on fiction, and fiction leads to fantasy, not reality. <laughs> and and that that part to me is just absolutely amazing, right? It's like how, if if they don't have the foundation in place, um, they don't even know what the hell you're talking about. Like if if I'm talking yeah. to someone, I'm like yeah, you know, you got to keep all that below the fold, and they don't even know what that means. Like yeah. we got a problem here, right? So that that to me is is super interesting how the lack of truly you know it's that whole expression i always i always got this from one of my very first coaches meet them where they are like yeah so when when you're going in and you're just sort of making an assumption and just like rolling out a general based program typically you're going to have a high failure rate right rather than let's figure out where you are Right. I'm sure it's the same in hockey. It's the same in all coaching. What do like, what do you think? Yeah. Well, what do they say in um, prescription without diagnosis is malpractice, right? You've got to, yeah, you've, you've look, it's little. So if I want to coach anybody, 3.3 things, right? Number one, little red arrow, you are here. Okay. So that comes from you're at a national park. Um, I don't care what national park. And if you're fit, you're not fit. If you got, you know, Uter, you know, oodles of um, oodles of water or very little water that that little red arrow you are here is the part of this the most important part of the map by a hundred miles right that's what you're defining right now and the other thing you need to know is where do you want to go what's your destination sounds easy very very difficult for anybody to um, you know kind of create when I ask somebody what they want they'll tell me what they don't want um, so anyway, so establish that and then coaching is the point between those two points, right? Like where are you at? Where do you want to go? Okay. Let's get on your bike and let's get there. So, so yeah, you've got to define that where they're at. So hardest question ever, man. What do you want? Like truly, it sounds so simple, but when you actually go to answer it, look at the end of the day, I'm just going to say this, like, I'm not going to you for, for bike training. You, you talked about <laughs> dropping your phone in the, the ocean twice, falling in, like riding through basic water. I remember you talk about mountain biking, going down a hill and cracking your helmet shoots. I guess your foundation of bike riding is pretty low, but I, I, like I would recommend perhaps, uh, oh, what's that biking program that we put my daughter through? Um, I got to think of a name, dude. So good. I'd love to see a video of Carl Bryan bike training with kids. That would be magic. <laughs> Can we do that? Can we do a video series? But anyways, the double bike is still going to be a thing. Hey, listen. Um, do, on a serious note, though, you, you, it's it, this has been coming up for me lately, and I because I know that you've got a bit of a frame when it comes to um, creating compelling offer. But what I, you know, it's funny because people are like, oh, you got to improve your sales skills. And I'm always like, okay, the reason you need to sell is because you have no like you 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 can't close. The yeah. reason you can't close and you're not getting sales calls because your phone's not ringing your appointment you know your calendar is empty everything else like to me it all comes back down to one thing and that is a compelling offer like if you don't have a compelling offer that basically you know quote unquote sells itself um like no one cares but so you've got a bit of a frame around compelling offer don't you um yes yes um well, okay. So what I would say is that like, let's say, okay, somebody wants to do a joint venture, right? Very common, right? Road dog. Like you meet a business coach and Always. it's like, oh, I'm going to go, I'm going to partner with the promotional company. I'm going to um, partner with the accountant. I'm going to promote with the networking guy or gal, like, right. They're, they're going to go and partner with somebody, which would make sense, right? Call that a joint venture. But if you haven't established your offer and really your hook, this would be more of a hook by the way. Um, but if you haven't established, like as an example, let's say you go to an accountant and you say, look, I'm going to help you take your business from where it's at to where you want it to go. Or I'm going to help your clients take their businesses from where they're at to where they want them to go. Uh, introduce me to a few of them and let's see how I do. That would be one kind of hook slash offer that you're taking to the accountant. And I'll give you the red hot tip. Uh, you're not going to get very far, right? They're not going to be, unless you have like, this is a friend of yours from high school. That's not happening, right? But they, but they won't tell you that. They'll just go, oh, wow, it sounds amazing. Okay, cool. I'll email you. And then the, the coach gets really confused because the, the accountant doesn't get back to them, right? Um, 
and then assumes, waits by the email, thinking it's going to happen, it's going to happen, it's going to happen. The guy was so enthusiastic, like it went amazing, right? But it's just not going to happen. Versus you go to the accountant and you say, okay, I can help any of your clients find 100 grand in 45 minutes without them spending an extra dollar on marketing or advertising. That's going to get you significantly further. Now, this has a chance of having your joint venture partner, uh, you know, basically come to the party. So that is why uh, we've got 497 million weighted algorithmic sequences on our software. All of that to say um, some things rank higher than others and offer is going to rank significantly higher. Offer ranks higher than joint venture because if you don't have that offer defined um, first, you're not going to get the joint venture partner, right? You're not going to lift their eyebrows. So, <clears throat> So I would definitely say that You've really got to establish that um, before you get going. And I would dare say that the average business coach just doesn't have that defined. That they don't have that, you know what I mean? That hook where, again, you somebody 100 grand in 45 minutes without them spending an extra dollar on marketing or advertising. If you say that with some mojo and legitimately feel comfortable that you can facilitate it, you can follow through on it. And again, we built software to do it. Um, again, I've just, you know, Tony Robbins, uh, Warren Buffett, Ray Dalio, you said that to them, they would be like, oh, wow, like, how would you do that? Or maybe not, I don't know, but ask them. But I'm going to tell you the local landscaper, the butcher, the baker, the candlestick maker would be incredibly enthused on average. So that's why it would rank significantly higher. And the frame would be that this goes first, this kind of other. Uh, yeah, if, if you don't have that first, a lot of your other marketing initiatives are not going to go very well. Like Road Dog, it's the guy who's advertising. Open up the local newspaper and you're going to see ads all over the place. And they're just a blown up business card, right? Like there's no interrupt. There's no engage. There's no education. And then there's no offer. And without a framework, like that's a frame of four that we teach. But like without some sort of a framework and a headline, something to grab some attention, um, not going to get very far. And, if, and again, if you want an example, just look at the National Enquirer or for that matter, watch. They used to say, watch the, you know, look at the National Enquirer and they have all these ridiculous headlines like, you know, uh, you know, who, uh, Brad Pitt taken over by aliens, that sort of thing. Right. All this clickbait. Unfortunately, nowadays, you the, the normal news um, is like the National Enquirer. God, that. that the road dog, do you get sick of the um, Meghan Markle and, you know, Prince Harry? Like, they just get beat up so bad, you know? They're, maybe they're, I don't know, they're not the worst people in the world. They're not the best people in the world, but they just don't deserve the craziness that's going on. You can't look at a headline or whatever, like, you know, like a, you know, a news story or like, um, wherever you're you know getting your news without some story about them and it just drives me nuts but that would be an example where they they need a headline that grabs attention that makes you click on it and then you start reading the article so need that folks need that well you know what this tells me a lot about your magazine subscriptions like people in us <laughs> weekly i don't know she was, like i don't read that so i typically don't get that um, real, real quick. That is, but uh, the Australian news shoots, news.com.au. I just can't. I, I again, I, I check out the Australian news every day, still to this day. Um, anyways, and it's always on there. And they, anyway, they. That's where I see it shoots. But so good, it's so good. <laughs> hey, listen, real quick on. Um, you just talked about JVs. Said another way, affiliates, right? Like it's sort of, sort yeah. of the same thing. Um, yeah. what's interesting to me, what strikes me with, it's the same for JVs is, uh, cause I actually was on a training with, um, that Dan Martell just did for SAS Academy, Dan, super smart dude. Right. And he was yeah. talking about affiliates. One of the things that got me was him talking about people are lazy. Like, let's not kid ourselves. Right. It's sort of like, if you go with somebody and like an accountant be like, Hey, you know, do you want to want to refer some people to me? Like it, it just like anything, like give people what they need to do to promote you right yes. like i know that with you guys you guys like you guys have an actual ad library that you can showcase and show people have you customized those for the people that you want to form jvs with have you That's done that have you done the work 
Have you written the emails? Have you written the sales copy? Have you written the headlines? Or is there a way that you can do a pixel swap where you can say, hey, you know what? I'm going to um, pay for ads in your ad account. Is there Are there things that you can do to cross promote? So but it just strikes me that it's like everybody wants the easy path. And even something as easy as just taking a few minutes. It's no different, dude, than when you say, like before you go and meet with somebody, have you even researched them? Have you even gone on to their LinkedIn? Like, have you even gone on and checked them, like Google them? What are they about? How long have they been in business? What do you really know about this business? Or are you just calling them up, kind of a hope and a prayer, and uh, maybe we'll see how it goes. That, yeah. that part was really interesting to me is just the amount of detail that you can truly put into an affiliate offer. Um, because when you take a look at that, you take a look at the amount of um, opportunities that are out there. Holy smokes, you don't need a lot of them. You keep saying it. Like the average business coach, if they had, you say 15, and you and I both know that's almost even a stretch, right? Like if somebody had 10 clients at two grand a month, heck, at 1,500 a month, they'd be pretty happy, right? They'd be living a pretty good life. So yeah. 10 clients, like, do you need a massive ad campaign for that? No, nope. like you just, sure. you just don't unless, unless your, your offer is absolutely horrific. So <laughs> I don't know, but you know, leading into that though, just real quick, why don't you riff on? Cause I, I think the, the importance there is having a proper business model. So okay. why don't you riff on that? Like what, if, if I was to ask you like business model, like t- talk to me about the importance of a quality well, what is it? What does he not even mean to you? Business model, even probably a better question rather than, you know, what, like what, what does business model mean to you? Yeah. Um, good question, by the way. Um, so business, I would use and Yeah. Just thinking road dog, right? The audience here, we're going to be, um, so look, a little company called Facebook doing this pretty good. And I would just ask you how much, actually, no, before I say this, I would say, so if I owned local newspaper, and back again, we actually covered this, but it was a while ago on the podcast, but I think huge value for some, um, and we did get some feedback that sounded a lot like that, where if I owned a local newspaper, how how does, I want you to think for a second, how does a newspaper um, earn money? And of course, you're now thinking, oh, but there's no newspapers. There's plenty of local newspapers. And of course, they do have websites and they're like the local, um, like in Kelowna, you know, it's called Castanet. Um, so there, there's local newspapers and they've got their website. And it's normally a hybrid of the two. Um, but how do they stay in business and how do they earn revenue? Think about it. And you'd probably be correct. And that would be advertising. Okay. So now how much does an ad cost in the local newspaper? And you might be thinking to yourself 500, you might be thinking 1,000, you might be thinking 1,500, you might be thinking of a, you know, like a 10 week thing and it's going to be five grand or something to that effect, right? But the bottom line is that advertising you're going to find in those types of dynamics, like a local, you know, a local newspaper, um, you're going to find like, like, you know, they're selling them for 500 to 500 to 2,500. Let's just use that as our frame, right? Um, so here's what I would do as my, you know, as that what, and this isn't the, the business model would be like a whole podcast, right? Road dog. Like we'd go, I just want to give you the, the inkling, um, you know, the hack, the way that I'd be approaching it. Okay. So I would be doing the ads for free. Whereas the, com- what's the competition doing? The competition is charging for the ads. I'd be doing it for free. Do you think it might be easier? If I was giving free ads in the local newspaper to local business owners, do you think it might be easier to get them engaged, to get in front of them, to get their ad copy and ultimately get their ad in my newspaper? The answer would be, I would assume, yes, right? Um, Now, once I got their ad, once I put their ad in my newspaper, what's there a really good chance of happening afterwards as a second order consequence that they actually now read my newspaper? Now, my readership went up, the number of ads in my newspaper went up, the size of my newspaper just went up, the legitimacy of it just went up. But what I'd be doing is I wouldn't be giving all those ads away for free. Here's the question. Does does the local landscaper really need an ad in the local newspaper? 
Does the accountant need an ad in the newspaper? Does the butcher, the baker, the candlestick maker, do they need ads in the local newspaper, right? And the answer is maybe, probably not. There are significantly better things that they could be doing than run ads in the local newspaper. But so what do they really need? They need a proper business model. Does the landscaper have a proper business model? Do they think about things like margin, high unit of sale, um, recurring revenue, et cetera? And the answer is no. Um, so what I'd be doing is I would have, I'd run the ads for free. I would then say, okay, Mr. Landscaper, by the way, I've got a process and some software. We can find any business owner hundred grand in 45 minutes without you spending an extra dollar on marketing or advertising. We've got some professional business consultants in-house um, and what we're going to do is we're, we would normally charge nine ninety seven to rip you through that. But I'm going to tell you what, because you're a local business owner, because you're a member of the chamber, because you just grabbed a free ad, because you paid extra to get the two color, to get the three color, to get the full page uh, X, Y, Z, I'm going to throw that in for free. Okay. I'm going to find you a hundred grand in 45 minutes without you spending an extra dollar on marketing or advertising. Uh, and word of warning, um, you might want a little bit of help afterwards because there might be some very simple things that you're not doing correctly that might be able to turn into massive amounts of revenue. And more importantly than that, massive amounts of profit. Because again, we're going to rip you through this little thing called profit acceleration software. It's not called revenue acceleration software. It's called profit acceleration software. So question, would you like two hours with our professional business consultant? And the guy will say yes and the guy will say no. Lots of people will say no, and they will get a free ad, and that's okay. That's the hack, okay? But if three in 10 say yes um, and end up buying your high-end consulting, how much does consulting sell for? $1,000 a month, 12 grand a year is low end. $2,000 a month, 24 grand a year is like what you need to be charging as a consultant. You should be able to pay your way doing that with any business owner easily once you get any talents whatsoever. And we've got coaches and no doubt you guys know coaches and consultants to charge, you know, five, 10 grand a month. We've got plenty of coaches that charge a hundred thousand dollars a year to consult with business owners. But let's forget that for a sec, Road Dog. Let's assume we're just going to be two grand a month, 24 grand a year. Well, instead of being in the business of selling ads for 500 to 2500 like I said earlier, they go into the gig of selling coaching and consulting and helping people with their business models and helping people with their business as opposed to, you know, put ads in front of them and hope somebody calls knowing that the ads probably going to last about 90 days, maybe six months. If you're lucky, they're going to turn it off and it's bye bye. What do they really need to, does the business owner need an ad or does the business owner need a proper business model and to understand about things like recurring revenue and margin, how to read their financial statements and, you know, controlling their costs and the importance of controlling their costs and all the things that, you know, coach slash consultant would guide you to do, which they're not doing, right? So, so do you think, so do your math. So if you got, what it was like 20 clients at two grand a month is 480 grand a year. So I don't know. If you own the local newspaper, do you think you could give free ads away and find 20 people that would agree to your consulting and agree to, you know, 1997 a month, $2,000 a month consulting? And the answer is with any level of moxie, any level of mojo, you'd absolutely be able to do that. But the difference is, Road Dog, you've now got, um, you know, you've got a high unit of sale. You're, instead of selling a $500 ad, you're giving them away for free. Um, and you're walking people into $24,000 consulting. And I said it earlier, but really, really important, the hack, okay, I guess psych business is psychology, right? The, the reason the business owner is doing 500 grand and not doing 1.5 million is his psychology, her psychology. The reason they're doing 1.5 million and not 5 million is one reason, and it's the owner's psychology. The reason they're doing 5 million and not 25 million is the owner's psychology. It's just, it's just math and it's adding zeros. So the guy who's owning the local newspaper, he is going to struggle mightily or she is going to struggle mightily with giving the ads away for free when for the last five, 10 years, they've been charging for them, right? So they, they're going to you know, have a difficult time with that. And by the way, you could create a hybrid where you know certain ads were for free and then certain ads were charged or you could bring them in for free and then try sell them into you know quarter pages and half pages and full pages 
as part of the you know the game plan. But if I owned a promotional company, right, what I would do is I would give the golf balls away for free. And again, business owners are renowned for enjoying, you know, playing golf. I'd give the golf, I'd give a hundred golf balls away for free. I would get in front of folks and it would be the similar pitch that, hey, we can find you a hundred grand in 45 minutes without spending a dollar on marketing or advertising. Because a promotional company is selling what? It's marketing and branding. That's why people, you know, they get, you know, t-shirts and hats and pens and all that sort of stuff. They, they think that they're branding. When in actuality, do they really need branding? Are they ready for branding? And the answer is probably not. What they really need is a business model. And they got to, again, their psychology, they need to get their head around the fact that what they need is a business model. And if you want an example of this, there's a little company called Facebook. And I would just ask, how much, have, how much do you pay Facebook for your personal profile? The answer is zero. If you have 10,000 photos or you have, well, I have no idea if they have a limit, but I don't think they have a limit. You could put 10,000 photos on Facebook and you pay zero. And then you want to build a company page, you pay zero. And then you want to have a group, you pay zero. In fact, they encourage you to do so, right? They want you to take on um, all these added services. And like the Super Bowl ad they had two years ago, um, Facebook, what did it promote? It promoted groups. Why? Because it's really when you build a group and then you bring in members, it's really good for targeted advertising. That's the reason they did it. How does Facebook make their money? Selling advertising to the tune of billions and billions and billions of dollars. So remember, if if you use a Facebook like if you use a service like Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, et cetera, online and it's free, uh, it's not free. You are the product. Think about that. Right. So so anyway, so business model road dog. Um, that's not quite, um, yeah, that, that's just, I, I, would, I would encourage folks to be thinking along those lines as opposed to, um, yeah, you know, just like traditional business and doing it the way it's always been done. Um, you know, what's the competition charging for that you could do for free? And that, that might be a roadmap to, to do real well. So what do you think of that? That's what I'd say. Well, that's interesting. You're talking about Facebook too. One of one of my local clients here. Um, anyways, they, they they deal with a lot of like more home service provider as their clients. They're uh, they they incorporate geofencing inside of their calendaring type system. But anyways, I can't say too too much. But let's just say that they're having conversations with Facebook, um, and Facebook is very 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 keen um, to get them on their platform. Why? Right? Like, why would Facebook be interested? in a geofencing type of booking system for its top advertisers. Gee, I don't know, because now all of a sudden they're going to get more bookings. They're going to get uh, the customer, their, their clients, right? Their top advertisers are going to get more sales, which is going to what? Make them more money because now they're going to spend more in advertising. Like It's just so funny how we tend to forget and start thinking way too small. Like you talk about the psychology of it all. It's like, where else, where else is there a practical, you know, sort of area that you can apply, you know, your business to or anything like that. Like the psychology piece is so, so, so huge. Yeah, um, real I, quick before oh. we wrap it up, what would you say is, is there any, like from all the years and everything else, like, is there like a, a couple of the top sort of things that you're like, man, like, there you go. One, two, three, there's your top three psychology hacks or anything like that. Like, do you have anything like that, Carl? Um, I think defining what you want, we talked about it a little bit earlier. I think again, a psychology hack is you want to take things away, not add, you've got too much to do. Um, so just clearly defining what it is that you want. One of the hardest things that you'll ever do because uh, there's a really good chance. Um, like, again, I, I ask you what you want, and then you'll tell them you'll start very quickly. You won't necessarily start with this, but very quickly you'll riff into this, start telling me what you don't want. And then what happens when, you, when you're concentrating what you don't want, what do you do? You, you ram right straight into it, right? Um, so a psychology hack there. Um, but an, another one, Road Dog, is just, again, creating more time for yourself, taking things off. And I'll tell you that like social media and eating, if you can control those two things, like the amount of time that you spend on a daily, weekly, monthly basis 
deciding what you're going to eat, eating, cleaning up after what you're going to eat, including going to the grocery store and packing up the groceries and waiting in line and paying and shoving your credit card into the dealio and carrying the groceries out, carrying them back into the house and then putting the stuff downstairs in the freezer, yada, yada, and then just say, hey, baby, what do you want to eat tonight? And it's back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. If you can control that, the number of hours that you can create for your week, um, not to mention, if you do it strategically, you're probably going to find you're going to be eating significantly healthier. Um, so again, I don't know that that, but it is a psychology hack because again, you're just, you're allowing yourself so much more free time, so much more space, right? Um, yeah, you know, you just create space for yourself to um, bring, like, okay, if you clean out your fridge right now, you go clean it out. You open it up and what's going to happen is you open up the fridge five minutes later or your spouse opens up the fridge five minutes later and their reaction is, wow, there's so much room in the fridge. Okay, now come back to it in one month's time and what happens? The fridge is full again, right? To the same level that it was when you cleaned it out because you're like Road Dog's home fridge has got a certain percentage of fullness. Mine has got a certain percentage of fullness, and I can tell you that my wife, mine is 110, and the door, the door hardly shuts, right? Like, that's my wife's standard. But we'll clean it out, and again, a month later, boom, it's back full. So what I'm getting at, but, it, but it's full with the right stuff. Instead of the garbage food, um, you know, and the strawberries that were going bad and the apples that weren't quite right, they get thrown out. Some, some good stuff, you know, presumably some good stuff starts filling that space, right? Same thing happens when you've got a thermometer for the, you know, the bank, the bank balance that you have is the same bank balance you've had for the last five years, right? It's just the way it is. You go on a trip, you spend a bunch of money. What do you do? You tighten the belt a little bit, you save up and you get to where you're comfortable. So the trick is you got to change that thermometer but what I'm getting at is that you empty your bank account and magically it's like, oh, there's a lot of space in my bank account. And then it gets back up to that threshold where you're comfortable. Um, so with your time, if you take um, what you do by, at, by creating that space with controlling your social media um, and controlling um, or strategically uh, approaching um, how you're eating and the amount of time that you allow your family to spend on what are we going to eat, eating, cleaning up after eating, et cetera. It's going to create all kinds of space for yourself. Now, that space could get filled. If you don't control it, it could get filled with Netflix. It could get filled with, you know, other, you know, going to the bar and having your drinks with your buds, or it could get filled with really positive, And this will depend on where you're at. And that might be a whole nother psychology hack that we could riff on. Uh, but, you know, depending upon where you're at, we'll tell you how you're going to go about filling that time. You know, it might be meditation. It might be doing absolutely nothing. It might be sitting on the couch. It might be playing with the kids. It might be playing with the grandkids, depending upon where you're at in life. Um, it might be going on a holiday. Could be a bunch of things. But but that road dog, I tell you, controlling those two things, social media and eating. and And by the way, driving might also come into it. If I were to be a traditional consultant ripping around the local city, um, I would be Ubering everywhere. Um, if not a limo, it might be fun. But I, I'd be Ubering everywhere, sitting in the back seat, and I would be working on my laptop and making calls while I was getting driven around. I would not be spending my time driving. Um, I would be using that time effectively. That's another. But depend. But we have a lot of folks that have home offices, and they don't have those challenges. But the folks that are, I mean, I have a good friend who spends two hours a day commuting um, to and from work and back over that. Um, and then, you know, finding a car spot is a whole nother deal for him. Um, so I just like, oh my God, I just, I, I couldn't even, like I couldn't even, like if he was driving an Uber, the parking spot would not be a problem. And then he would be able to work for the hour on the way and the hour on the way home. Um, and the train doesn't quite have, I mean, you could do it on the train, right? But I just, sorry, it's just not the same uh, effect. So anyway, so I don't know, Road Dog, what do you think? Okay. Um, <clears throat> as I'm losing my voice, the the one thing you see, that's how long that, that rabbit hole took. Yeah, like I literally <laughs> lost my voice there for a second. Um, <laughs> the, the only thing, and I want to close out on this, <laughs> you talk about, cause I know this is going to, this, this is speaking directly to a lot of folks. Okay. 
you mentioned something really important there. Your bank balance is going to be the same. Unless yeah. you, you talk about that um, thermometer, as you called it, the million dollar question, how do you raise your threshold? How do you raise your thermometer? How do you raise it so now there is a yeah. new higher There's, baseline? Nice. Um, well, I tell you, one of the ways that I did it, um, I was a reasonably a youngish man and I built a house. I could, I bought a house I couldn't afford with an ocean view in one of the most expensive cities in the world. Um, so that's, you know, like you go buy something, and, but okay, but buy. So before you go and buy the seven series um, BMW, buy an asset that appreciates um, again. So it's an investment home. Um, and by the way, I've, I've said this before. I spoke to somebody recently, and they're like, "Oh, I will follow your advice." And I, you know, I bought a place, and we're Airbnb in it, yada yada yada. And it's like, it's look, land appreciates, buildings depreciate. So if you have strata attached to your investment, um, it doesn't. It's it's not that. It's not an. It's not a hard no, but it's close, right? Because what's going to happen is the strata fees are always going to increase. Um, so that you're never really going to have that super duper um, home run um, and capital gains will be affected because they're not as attractive to people that, you know, know um, a thing or two about real estate. So um, so answer road dog is, you know, empty that, you know, like go and put yourself in a position where you don't have any other option. Um you know, that's one way, but just be careful with that. As I say it, I don't want to put people in harm's way or families in harm's way. Make sure that it's an asset. And also remember that assets go up and assets go down, including real estate, uh, 2008, cough, cough, cough. Um, but yeah, that's, that's one of the ways to do it. Um, you know, you just road dog, you got to do some work on yourself and just really start, you know, building on your self-worth. One of the best ways to do that is to educate yourself. Um, and I would dare say the folks that are hanging out with us on this podcast right now um, are doing that in spades already. Um, so there's some hacks around that, but that, that's one way that's not, you know, as advertised as normal. But I'll tell you there, I remember like I bought a house, um, Road Dog knows it well, but I'll tell you it's an expensive house. Um and I just, you know, and I didn't sell off any assets. And I just, you know, I just said, look, here's what we're doing. This is the way we're doing it. And I just tell you for six, and it's not like I was putting myself in harm's way by any stretch, but I can tell you that my thermometer was affected wildly for a period of time. And for six months, I went to work at a level that I had not worked before or for a long time. And, uh, and there were, you know, all kinds of, you know, wild, positive, uh, you know, flow on effects from that. So, I don't know, Road Dog, that's what I could would say. Would you say, Carl, that as a result of that, there are two, two things. One, you were very clear on what you wanted. Yep. And as a result of that, it was like, okay, this is now the new, like you just sort of made it so, new. right? Like this is now, because th this is what I want. This is the life I want. I now need, like, you almost identify as that individual, if you will. Yeah, it's a new standard. It's a new standard. That's, yeah. And then, see, what people don't realize, like, one of the things, um, so you, look, so you move into a neighborhood. Um, let's just assume that there's, you know, there's different classes of neighborhoods. I think that that, you know, that's just reality. Well, when you move into a higher class of neighborhood, you start hanging out with a higher class of people, right? Like Road Dog every Tuesday, you're hanging out with some, you just mentioned a guy, you know, he's thrown around, was it a hundred million? Like, it's just an afterthought, right? You live in a very, you know what I mean? In an impressive neighborhood. And that's what comes in impressive neighborhood. So, so you level up because the conversations are better. The relationships are better. Instead of having 10 beers, we're having two. Instead of talking about, you know, blah, 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 we're talking about business and talking about, um, you know, reading financial statements and letters to shareholders instead of the, you know, the up and coming, you know, fancy bestseller book by the influencer on Facebook that has got six months of experience, but nobody notices because he does such a good job of marketing himself because he hired a flashy agency and, he rented the Rolls Royce, yeti, yeti, yeti. 
Yeah. I w- it's so funny. You mentioned that. It's like, yeah, no, it, it, it's uh, the elevation of the, the audience that you hang out with is for sure a huge one. Uh, I just have to laugh because it's like, yeah, we're not talking about the influencer that's selling his new book. We're actually talking about a person in the group that his book is going to be a New York Times bestseller based on pre-sales before he's even launched it for release in the beginning of January. Like, it's just, it's a different world, right? Like, it's so funny. But anyway, folks- legit, like I said, the guy, it's not like, you know, like legit, right? Like the guy, like he's written the book, but he's also had the experiences, got the wisdom. And it's not written on, you know, cute philosophies that he think are amazing. It's built on years of wisdom and punches firm in the nose, right? Yeah. So different level, man. Different level, yeah. My for, for sure. And, and I know that we like to crack on like B&Is and stuff like that. And it's, it is fun because the level of conversation in that room is very different than for me on my Tuesday hikes where it's like the, the common theme is always – um stop making excuses right like it's just there's there's certain times i'm like man i can't believe i just got called out on that you know like uh be it something as simple as my next race when i'm running or whatever it's like it's just it's too funny how it's like wow that just sounds like a pretty interesting excuse huh okay i'm sure that there's other races like yeah (laughs) you're probably right you know like it's pretty hilarious but and, and there's just no excuses in that group they don't care who's in power right like um, anyways, I could get into that because there wasn't that conversation in regards to somebody in the oil and gas industry. I'm like, oh, you must be kind of excited about a potential, you know, change uh, politically. And he's like, I don't really care because like we're, we got to be prepared for all of it. And it's just that thinking, that, that mental toughness is insane to me. And it's okay. just, I just want to make sure everybody heard this. This is important. Okay. There was a political conversation. And the guy you were speaking to who was legit said, I don't care who's in power in a nutshell. Yep. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because why would he? Because it's like, no matter what, you have to be ready for all situations. Right? You can't just, because again, it goes back to that. If you're only going to go running when it's, it's sunny and not too hot, but not too cold, like, look, man, like the porridge is going to be the porridge. Like you still got to eat it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, you, you, you. You got to do the work no matter what. And you got to be prepared for everything. And I just think that part was just, it's pretty cool. It's pretty, for me, I, I'm fired up to go and do these hikes. And guess what? I'll be doing them throughout the entire winter. We're wearing a freaking headlamp on my forehead so we can see where we're going with like the little spikes on the bottom of our shoes. But that's just part of the game. Because if I'm willing to get up when it's minus 20 and it's pitch black, you don't think that's going to like make me stronger and make me better. Like it's insane. It's just insane. So anyways, there you go. Shoots. I, it's too bad that you're missing out on this. I just, maybe now with your new buff physique, it'd be, uh, and just to see that hair blowing on the way down, would be pretty, pretty electric. It's electric. almost gone shoots. I told, uh, my new good buddy, Stan Hartling's big deal, a big, big deal. But anyways, I told him, get my hair cut, and he's gone away, and he said he wants before and after shots, and I told him the before is a comedy, and the after is going to be a thriller. So there you go, shoot. There you go. Oh, wow. Wow. There it is. <laughs> I, can't, I can't wait to see where this is going. I personally think you should go with the mullet and the mustache. It is coming back. Just shoots. throwing that out there, shoots. Yeah, I just – the think electric. I- before I Anyways, go out, Michael, I'm going to close this out. Uh, thanks for tuning into another episode of Business Coaching Secrets with the man, the king of the Caribbean, Carl Bryan. And if you're not on the inside or you want exclusive access to Carl's before and after with his hair, right? Like this is a big deal, folks. Or you just want his, you know, boring business yeah. daily, you know, email tips on how to actually grow your business. I'm personally more interested in the hair and the mustache. But anyways, visit focus.com and subscribe today. And again, if you enjoyed the podcast, please share with a fellow business coach or someone that you think might be interested in coaching and or growing their business. And of course, as always, we'd appreciate it if you'd rate the episode as well. And that is it for another week. We really hope that you had some value out of this and we'll see you on the next episode. Remember, folks, progress equals happiness. 
Carl Bryan built Profit Acceleration Software 2.0 to train business coaches how to find any small business owner more than $100,000 in 45 minutes without them spending an extra dollar on marketing or advertising. This becomes a business coach's superpower. So as a business coach, you'll never again have to worry about working with business owners that can't afford your high-end coaching fees. Check us out at Focused.com.